I literally am the exception and you can be too. You can be the person that hasn't taken it or hasn't been successful for several times or in a long period of time since you've even visited, you know, your law, anything, and you can actually get it done. And I hate to sound like some cheesy infomercial, like it really works, but <laughs> genuinely, it really worked for me. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. We've got a really special person today that I am so excited to uh, talk to, who's just passed the Uniform Bar Exam in DC. Hi, Miriam, how are you? I am great, so happy to be here. Yeah, this has gotta be quite a moment for you, isn't it? It's completely, I, I've been trying to grasp what I've accomplished, for what, five, six days now, and I still don't know if I have it. I just can't. I mean, I'm shocked, but I'm just, you know, I didn't think on my first time back, and I thought I would warm up, and then I would <laughs> be better by the second time. So I'm, yeah, I'm you, excited and shocked right now. <laughs> right. For our audience, let's go ahead and bring them back into the story and, and kind of tell them, because uh, you've had quite a journey to get here and an improbable journey in some ways. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be taking the bar exam in February? Okay, so, so that everyone understands the craziness of my journey, I am from San Diego. And I went to undergrad and law school in Louisiana. I went to Southern Law Center and Southern University for undergrad. And as everyone knows, Louisiana still studies Napoleonic law. And I never intended on staying in Louisiana forever. And so I attended this law school, studied Louisiana law, and then went and took the bar in California in 2011, July bar. And I was unsuccessful. I need to go look at my scores and all that again, but I wasn't far, I was pretty close. So I took it again in February, I did a big box lot bar review both times and I was again unsuccessful in February. And then I started a life living for personal fulfillment and happiness. Like I just kind of got off of the, I needed to study all the time and I'm kind of sort of miserable because I'm always studying. <laughs> and I started living to do what I enjoy, which is travel. So I started working as a flight attendant and I really fell in love. I was actually had already started flying by the time I took that February bar. And so it was interesting because when I didn't pass that time, I was, I was bummed, but I was really happy because I was enjoying my job. So to make a long story short, a eight years passed <laughs> from that point until me taking this bar exam in February, 2020. And I got married, I had a kid, and I'm not going to say I ever really got tired of flying, but it got more difficult because... I didn't expect to just never want to leave my kid. <laughs> so that's what reminded me that I have this ability. And so it made me reach out to some of my friends that have been practicing. And one of them passed Florida way back when we first graduated law school. And she told me about celebration. And I watched one of these videos <laughs> about someone that was successful. It was actually a girl that used to be in Florida and then took DC specifically because I was just obsessed with it. I said, her situation sounds like mine. And I just hopped on board. I watched probably a couple things. I had my 15 minute consult with Jackson, literally on an overnight, I was flying <laughs> Flight I remember that you were in a hotel room somewhere when we talked. That's right. I, now that comes back room. to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I really trusted my instincts because I remember saying, Mom, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but I just talked to this man for 15 minutes and I'm ready to like sign it up, sign everything up. And he convinced me to take it in DC, which even during that phone call, I hadn't decided what exact path I was on because I'm currently living in Texas and Texas is switching over to UBE. And we went 
through the whole rationale of who you would be being graded against by taking it in Texas and then offering the UBE so soon. And just, I felt comfortable with Jackson. I immediately felt comfortable with Jackson. I immediately trusted his logic. He thinks similar to me in the way that he expressed what makes sense for me in this moment, you know? And, and the, the cool part, I mean, we'll jump ahead just a little bit, but your score was good enough that you can get into Texas now. Mm-hmm. So the strategy worked <laughs> just perfectly. And we'll talk about DC in a minute because that is a trip, isn't it? <laughs> Taking I soon. am so glad that I took it in DC. I- but you, you did a lot of things really well. And one of the things that was great from the beginning is that you signed up for some mentoring. You got into the, what we call basic plus program and you added photo reading and you use paraliminals and you embraced all of that stuff, right? Talk a little bit about that if you would. I think that the best way to be successful in your bar review is to go all in. And I mean that in a way that the big difference between celebration and everywhere else is you're taking care of like the whole person. (laughs) You are making sure that you're photo reading. So therefore your time management is just completely accelerated. What you're able to get through the material and the absorption through photo reading makes the fact that my two-year-old goes to sleep at eight and I'm studying sometimes from eight to midnight or increments and incrementally it makes it feel like, oh my gosh, I got through certain subjects because I was able to photo read the whole subject several times. As far as the paraliminals, I'm just anxious. I am, I worry in general. And I had, I felt like they go hand in hand. And sometimes when we talk about photo reading, we don't really talk that much about the paraliminals, but if you're doing one, you should pretty much be doing the other because the paraliminals, once you really dive in, they really prepare your mind almost each night for me to really for, further absorb what you photo read. You, it's getting you into a state. And I, I just relied on all of those tools. So of course, the lectures are good and practicing your essays and and samples and all of that is great. You can get that anywhere. But to me, the photo reading and the paraliminals is what really sets it apart and the mentoring. Because without the mentoring, there was really no, you have to do the mentoring with Jackson because Jackson (laughs) is so good at what he's doing at this point that he probably caught a vibe of some sort from of from me early on and was able to say, okay, let's stop for a second because I know what you're doing and I need you to stop doing that if you want to be successful. I mean, he probably told me that like two or three times during our our video sessions because he could tell that you're still being anxious and I don't know why, because we got plenty of time. Your writing is improving. These are the areas that you need to work on. So I'm all over the place with this answer, but Photo reading and paraliminals go hand in hand, especially if you're going to immerse in this and you want to take care of it all because it's stressful to study like this. It's a lot of information. It's overwhelming. And in order for me, for me to be successful, I had to stop trying to compartmentalize the bar and, and really look at it as, okay, this is my life now. I need to be able to live, be a wife, be a mother, and study, and not be stressed out and cursing people out and you know, acting crazy because I'm so overwhelmed. I need for to find like a peace through yeah. The studying. Yeah, mm-hmm. and one of the great things I saw, Miriam, with you was that you went from this sort of hyper-stressed, anxious mm-hmm. individual to somebody who was growing into the process and becoming calmer, more focused, and certainly more confident going in then i thought right before the exam you were you were just like in the, you were in the zone you were like okay i know what i'm doing i know how to do this and it's not nothing's going to get me right now and i thought that that was really it was a remarkable opportunity as a teacher and a mentor to watch somebody just kind of come into to sort of their natural resources and their being 
uh, I don't know how to put it, you, you just sort of bloomed, you just sort of uh, blossomed in that, that structure. And I thought it was amazing to see you become aware that, yeah, not only are you a good mom, a good wife, good, good in business, smart person, but you're also capable of doing this thing that you were carrying around from back in the day with California. And uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun to watch, I, I got to say. But you put in a lot of effort, didn't you? I did. I put in a lot of hours. But I also, I, when you were talking about the bloom of it, I call it something else. I finally trusted this new way of doing things. And I think that had I not even been resistant in the first place, I probably... <laughs> who knows what my score could have been but I think that what for me what changed in over time was that number one I got comfortable with the process and that's why I'm so glad that I started early because I was I didn't think of it at the time that I would be learning new things so I'm learning photo reading I'm learning how to use paraliminals I'm learning mind mapping those are things I didn't do in law school so it wasn't like riding a bike because I was having to acquire a new skill. But by the time I felt like I got good at those things and I started to trust that it was working, I really, I, I, all the stress really just left. I just felt better about the process, about what I was doing and about my chance at being successful. Yeah, and that makes a big difference, doesn't it? When you start to believe that you can do it, right? I, I think that's a big part of it. You you incorporated photo reading, paraliminals, mind mapping pretty early on in the process. A lot of times people ask me, does it take a long time to learn how to do those things? How would you respond to that? I would say no. It doesn't take a long time to learn how. I would say that it takes a while for you to get confident in doing it. So you're doing it right. You just don't believe that you're doing it right. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was able to recall, because you go through the, the process and you don't really go back and photo read, photo read stuff from the very beginning because you've already done that. And now in hindsight, I had all that information and I was doing it right way, way back then when I started the process, but I was doubting myself and not understanding that it, it doesn't work that way. You, and, I, and you have to get to the point of trusting it in order for it to work. It was, it was very evident in my, towards the end when I was doing my MBE questions, I would tell my husband, I finished so early. I did them so quickly. I am, don't even want to grade it, you know? And he was like, I thought that was the point. I thought the point was for you to get, just read it through an answer, read it through an answer. And he's like, so wouldn't that be fast? And I'm like, I know it's supposed to be this way, but I'm just telling you that the fact that it, I finished with 45 minutes is stressing me out, you know? And I grade it and I did, and I'd done really well. I was, I mean, the MB part blows my mind still because, I finished in the exam, I mean, <laughs> and I was first in my section every time. My proctors were so, these great old men, and they were like, are you sure you're, are you sure you're done? You sure? You don't want to, don't check it that I can't look back at this, just take it. <laughs> and he said, okay. And it was, so that's the level of just, I know what I'm doing that I'd reached. And it was because, it was because I was listening to those doggone paraliminals the, on the drive, on the lift drive to the, <laughs> to the exam, man, the night before. And I was photo reading. I had photo read, I think, everything twice the night before. I just, why not? I had the time I'm in a hotel. And yeah. so it That's worked. pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about DC. It is one of my favorite jurisdictions for the bar exam. And, and it's what I had encouraged you to look at from the, the beginning. Tell me what your experience was like with, with the DC bar. So I have a friend who postponed and didn't take February. And he was taking it in New York. And I am begging him right now to go to DC. This is something that's very particular to me. So I don't know, you know, how everyone else is going to look at it. But DC was 
the first time that I have ever seen in my adult life, in my life as a child, a situation where everyone in charge was African American. Yep. The cops that were guarding the building, the people that checked my bags, every single proctor, the lady that was keeping time. I have never had that. I mean, I took California twice and it was the polar opposite of that. It is, yeah. And I remember after my day one, I called my mom and I said, mom, I've never been in a professional situation where I thought that everyone there was rooting for me. I remember my proctors feeling like, I told my mom, I said, they reminded me of my grandpa. I said, they really, it was just a totally different environment than I had ever been in before. Except, I mean, I went to Southern Law, so let me not say that. (laughs) But this was even a bigger scale than that. You know, I mean, I just never had that. And so it was definitely different because (laughs) I've never had anything like that. Yeah, and we, when we first talked, I, I said that to you, and I, you, yes, looked, you, you kind of gave me a side eye, like, eh, I don't know, white guy telling me about this. But the, the reality is that I think for all of us, we want to be in an environment where we feel nurtured and heard and seen uh, in a positive way. And the bar exam is stressful, and it is mm. some other group of people judging us. And I think from a point of privilege, it's hard for me to truly appreciate how difficult that must be. But I have gotten this comment and feedback from so many African-American students about the DC bar that it just feels like a comfortable, warm place to be. And and I think that makes a difference. I, I'm not saying you can't pass anywhere else. Of course you can. But when I compare that to the Texas bar or the California bar or the Florida bar, it, it's a different, it's a different uh, scenario. And I I think one of the things I liked about D.C., I've always liked about them, is it's a smaller bar exam. You don't have thousands and thousands of people there. And and I think that they've kept that atmosphere in the the bar exam in a way that that makes it possible for people to do their best rather than trying to intimidate them and maybe they they see if they can play mind games with them, like Florida um, or California. And so I, I thought that was really good. And I, I really was excited to see you take that approach. For those that don't know what we're talking about in terms of the strategy with Texas, because Texas was moving to the UBE, they had announced that any uniform bar exam score within 24 months of that move would be transferable. And the score that you needed, I want to say, was it 270 or 266 in 270 Texas? 270 for Texas. And you blew that away. And so you could get licensed in uh, D.C., New York, Illinois, (laughs) Texas, pretty much anywhere, pretty much anywhere. (laughs) That had to be an extraordinary feeling for you. Like I said, I probably read the email like 35 times at this point. I told my husband, I said, I think I know it by heart. (laughs) I was... I'm not going to say I was in shock because I knew I killed those MBEs. I really did. I felt good leaving that day. But from our mentoring, I felt like I was struggling with my timing on the writing and I was really worried. And then when we, when you gave your predictions for the topics, (laughs) that knocked me out a little bit and they were spot on, (laughs) which further frustrated my situation because those were hard subjects. And I was just worried about the time because even though it's not even a matter of I'm not a fast typer, it's just I'm going from California where I had an hour to having 30 minutes on each essay and it's a big difference. But with all that being said, the scores were amazing. I have, I'm still on cloud nine. I'm trying to get my husband to move to Denver now. Um, <laughs> Colorado's a UBE state and you, you're you in. Exactly. The I said, we can go anywhere but Alaska. I mean, and nope. I don't know why Alaska would be that high, but that's perfect. I, I, I don't either. It's pretty strange. I, I wanted to, to talk also about the fact that as a, as a wife and a mom, you've got a two-year-old, right? What is, we get a lot of uh, folks that come to us who are in that circumstance. What is that like trying to balance and manage all of that and study? I'm going to be 
prank because I think I'm not the mom <laughs> that has it all together, okay? My kid goes to daycare <laughs> and I studied while he was at daycare. I did a final review after I put him to bed, but I, I can't, I couldn't have done, I can't study with him. I mean, he's too, <laughs> he's, it's too difficult with having him home and he's not the type of, kid that's on some perfect schedule and that likes to play games on the iPad. No, my son wants to play football tackle with me while I'm trying to study. So I am was super blessed that my husband was able to support us and I was able to take that opportunity and take a break from flying and really commit that time to studying. I think that that has something to do with my success for sure. But yeah. for the people, I, I have friends that have been studying via other bar reviews and are working at the same time. And some of them don't have a kid. Some of them do have kids. And I keep telling them, you will put, because, and this is something that I stress to people, even with me studying nine to five, I put in, I believe, fewer hours this time than I had before. When I was studying for California nine years ago, I didn't have a kid, I didn't have a husband. I was single and I was able to commit to study and I would sit there for 12, 13, 14 hours. I was timing my sleep. I had the same support. I was just living at home. My mom was cooking and I was studying. And look at the result, you know? So I think that by having photo reading, paraliminals, and just the way that your whole, your lectures aren't crazy long. I mean, there's a lot to say about it. There's a lot of reasons why this should work for someone that has a lot on their plate. Because it's, but, but I have to stress, <laughs> you got to be a photo reader. And I don't know how else to tell you that. Because to regular read any of those chapters, I mean... It just doesn't, it's uh, just, you know, just going to be about it's sort of like, Yeah, we talk about it. It's like if you're trying to put a screw in the wall and you've got an old rusty screwdriver versus a power drill. I mean, sure, you exactly. can use the old rusty screwdriver, but really use the power drill. <laughs> and, and, and for the people, because I have a classmate that's um, in your program right now from Southern, and she was asking me questions about photo reading. And I said to her, you have to do it because it's the only way to get enough done in a short amount of time. If your window is four hours, you can totally pass by studying for four hours a day or five hours a day, but you have to be photo reading because you have to get all the info in. What you're going to be able to accomplish, it's just about time management. If nothing else, it's about time management. For me, it became about time management and like, mental relaxation and <laughs> all kinds of other things, confidence. But if if the end all be all is time management because you just don't have time, you need to trust in photo reading because that's your way to get it done. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm so excited for you and proud of you. And I know the effort that you put in and watching your journey has just been it's been a blast really. I know that there are people out there who are struggling with the bar who are struggling with their own self-confidence and what to do and how to, to get at this. What would you say to those people right now? I've been there. I absolutely, the fact that I am so still shocked that I passed today will go to show you <laughs> that, I mean, I just thought it would take me another time because it's been such a long gap. And I think that that's the reason why I messaged Jackson saying, Jackson, you need to make sure you talk to me and put me on your podcast <laughs> because I literally am the exception and you can be too. You can be the person that hasn't taken it or hasn't been successful for several times or in a long period of time since you've even visited, you know, your law, anything. Thing, and you can actually get it done. And I hate to sound like some cheesy infomercial, like it really works. But <laughs> genuinely, it really worked for me. I mean, I got a 276. 
which I was, I mean, because there was two things. As soon as I get my score, I'm reading it, making sure I pass. It told me I passed DC and I'm within the first few lines. So I got all excited. And then I realized I was like, oh, I got to do better than DC. I don't even live there. <laughs> and as I'm going down and looking at the scores, you know, I did, I did it all. And it's been a long time. And I'm not a person that's been clerking or a legal assistant or anything like that. I have been a flight attendant <laughs> full time since two, 2011. And now out of nowhere almost because I had a son and I just got sad every time I left him for a trip, I turned back to my law and wanted to go and pursue it. And I passed the first time with a 276. If those, if that's not proof, I don't know what else is because proof. <laughs> I think that's proof. Miriam, I am, I am so thrilled for you. And I'm I'm excited to see what your legal career is, whether it's in Colorado or Texas or where where it would take you. You have a lot of choices. <laughs> it's nice to have choices. And and we're so uh, pleased and 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 grateful for you just being a, a great source of support for our students. And uh, I know that you've uh, talk to people on our Facebook group and encourage them as well. And uh, I know that this uh, interview will encourage a ton of people. <laughs> I just know that. I hope so. Uh, I really so. do because I think that people put off what they don't feel like they can accomplish. And I know that there's this gap and it seems like it's impossible to go back in time and recall these things that you learned such a long period of time ago. But with photo reading and with Jackson's direction, I'm trying to tell you guys, you can do it and you should, you should. That degree was expensive. So let's get through the bar and figure out what we want to do with the next. Yeah, super. Well, thank you so much. And it's great to see you. Great to share this moment with you. And I know your family is excited and uh, thrilled for you as well. And when your little guy gets older, maybe he can watch this interview and find out what mama was doing during those times. <laughs> and, right. uh, he'll, he'll be he'll be excited as well. I'm well, telling again, the world he's a terror. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mom, what you say? But in any event, thank you. And to our audience, we want to thank all of you for being with us. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have, and I hope that you're as inspired as I am by Miriam's story. So with that, we're going to go ahead and say bye bye for now. Thanks, Miriam. Thank you.